Hello to all you VIPs, it's Carly here from Learn English with Carly. Hopefully you didn't have to do any DIY over the weekend. That would be a tad annoying. Maybe you need some TLC. Okay, why am I talking like this using acronyms? Acronyms are abbreviated forms using the initial letters of words. I have 15 acronyms to teach you today that you can then use in your everyday English. Your homework today is to try and use three of these acronyms by writing a comment to me in the comments box below and translate them into your first language. Okay, hopefully my introduction was an OTT. OTT stands for over the top, meaning that something is exaggerated and or extreme. It basically means to do more than is necessary. This is a British slang word that is very common in everyday spoken English. Let's look at some examples in different tenses. Chris's behaviour last weekend was OTT. This means that his behaviour was a bit extreme. Florence is dressed a bit OTT. Florence is wearing an extreme outfit. Maybe she's dressed up a little bit more than is necessary. His performance in that film was a bit OTT. The actor's performance was more than needed for this role. I needed some new clothes, but I went a bit OTT and spent a fortune. This means I went a bit crazy and spent more money than I should have. Have you heard of the acronym WAG? WAG stands for Wives and Girlfriends and is British slang. This acronym was first used during the build-up to the 2002 World Cup held in Japan and Korea, and the term was further popularised by the British tabloids. A tabloid newspaper is a type of newspaper that is more sensational, with stories about violence, crime, scandal and celebrities, for example. The term WAG then became really popular during the 2006 World Cup in Germany, to refer to the wives and girlfriends of England's footballers. Well-known wags from 2006 include Victoria Beckham, the wife of David Beckham, and Colleen Rooney, the girlfriend of Wayne Rooney. Whether you use this acronym or not is a difficult one because it has been criticised for being sexist and stereotypical. However, if you read a British tabloid newspaper, you will certainly come across this term and that's why I think it's important to teach you this as it's a part of British slang language and therefore British culture and it is still an acronym that is used today. Moving on to an acronym that is also a bit controversial, NFT. An NFT is a non-fungible token, a digital file, usually digital art, that people buy and sell based on blockchain technology. NFTs are controversial because when purchasing an NFT, what are you really buying? Would you buy an NFT? What are the pros and cons of buying an NFT? What about GMO, genetically modified organism? GMOs are modified plants or animals or other organisms whose genes have been scientifically changed. Genetic modification affects many of the products that we consume and use on a daily basis. Whether you agree with GMOs or not, this is a useful acronym to know. GMO foods are produced for a variety of reasons. Should people avoid GMOs? Do you eat GMO-free products? Are there GMO-free supermarkets where you live? Now, after our controversial acronyms, perhaps you need some TLC. TLC stands for Tender Loving Care. This is informal language, but we use it if someone or something needs to be treated with some love, kindness, care and attention. Julian has a cold. He needs a bit of TLC. 
Carol will need a lot of TLC when she gets out of hospital. Maggie's daughter has had a bad time recently. She needs a bit of TLC. Now remember to subscribe, like, comment and share any of the videos that you see here on Learn English with Carly. It is really, really appreciated. Okay, do you like DIY? I don't mind it, but I don't do as much DIY these days. What's DIY? DIY stands for do it yourself. We use this to describe the activity of decorating, renovating, building and making repairs at home by yourself instead of employing a professional decorator, plumber, etc. Home improvements carried out by you. I love doing DIY. I need to do some DIY this weekend. My uncle hates doing DIY. Now in the research for this video, I read that there are over 6,000 DIY stores in the UK. Home improvement is very, very popular in the UK. So there are lots of these DIY shops or DIY stores. Do you know the meaning of this next acronym? The dog has gone AWOL. AWOL means absent without leave. This was originally absent without official leave and originated from the US military, but has since been shortened to absent without leave. The soldier is AWOL. To go AWOL is used to say that someone is away without permission or in slang that nobody knows where someone is. Richard went AWOL last night. Have you heard from him? Ethan went AWOL after the party last night. Someone going missing would be a tad annoying. Ah, another acronym that I find myself using a lot as an alternative to a bit or a little. TAD stands for to a small degree. So in a bit or very slightly. Note that we actually write TAD in lowercase and not with capital letters. I find loud music a tad annoying. This means that I find it a bit annoying. Lauren's lateness is a tad irritating. I was a tad nervous for the interview. Could you move up a tad, please? We use this to ask someone to move a little bit so that there is more space for us to sit down. I've heard this phrase being used on a train, for example, when the neighboring passenger is probably taking up a bit more space than their own seat. Now to the next acronym, ASAP or ASAP. This means as soon as possible. We use this a lot in text messaging, in our everyday speech with family and friends, but also even in work with colleagues that we know well. Can you send that to the customer ASAP, please? Call me ASAP. I'll call you back ASAP. I recently received an email from a clothing company that said, your refund will be processed ASAP. Let's see what we've learned so far. Can you fill in the gaps with the correct acronym in the following sentences? We have ASAP, NFT, GMO, AWOL, TAD, OTT, TLC, or DIY to choose from. Number one, this weekend, I need to do some Correct, DIY. This weekend, I need to do some DIY. What happened last night? Melissa went. That's right, AWOL. What happened last night? Melissa went AWOL. Mike just broke up with his girlfriend. He needs a bit of... Well done. Mike just broke up with his girlfriend. He needs a bit of TLC. The film was a uh, long for me. Well done again. The film was a tad long for me. And this last question, 
Stuart's behaviour at the meeting was a bit... That's right. Stuart's behaviour at the meeting was a bit OTT. OK, good work, everyone. Let's learn some more acronyms that are used in everyday English. Here at Learn English with Carly, you are definitely a VIP. VIP stands for a very important person, and I'm sure we have several VIPs watching today. A VIP is an informal way to refer to someone who is notable in some way, and they are usually then given some kind of special treatment. There were lots of VIPs at the film screening last night. We do also use the acronym VIP to describe things involving special access, such as VIP lounge, VIP pass, or VIP treatment. I'll use the VIP lounge at the airport. We were given the VIP treatment on our honeymoon. And if you want to show someone that you're treating them like the important person that they are, then you can say, I'll give you the VIP treatment and roll out the red carpet for you. To find out the meaning of to roll out the red carpet or to give someone the red carpet treatment and other red idioms, be sure to check out this video linked above. FYI, you're doing great at English. FYI stands for your information and it's commonly used in email and text messaging to indicate a message that the receiver doesn't need to respond to. It is often used in informal business conversations too. FYI, Lynn's going to be late tonight. FYI, please find attached a copy of the certificate. FYI, the meeting's been postponed. Are you feeling warm? Could you put the AC on please? AC, air conditioning, a process or machine used to cool your home or car down, for example. It's hot in here. Can you turn on the AC, please? I'm cold. Could you turn off the AC, please? OK, you're going on a trip to see your friend and she asks you for your ETA. Estimated time of arrival. What's your ETA? Your estimated time of arrival is a time in which you expect to arrive at your destination. This acronym comes from the transport industry with modes of transport such as trains, buses and planes, but is now even used if we're not using public transport, especially as an acronym in instant messaging. ETA is also used metaphorically in business situations, for example, to clarify the estimated time for a task to be complete. What's the ETA on the reports you're writing? You will definitely have seen this next acronym, Q&A, question and answer. This is a situation in which a person or a group of people ask questions and another person or group answers the questions. We usually refer to Q&A sessions, especially in business or in the events industry. We'll hold a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. After the speech, there will be a Q&A session. That was a great Q&A session there after the talk. On a similar theme, FAQ is our next acronym. FAQ stands for Frequently Asked Question, or frequently asked questions. You will see this on websites, in articles, and in online forums where common questions tend to occur. An FAQ section is a website that answers those typical questions. This website includes a useful FAQ section. If you have any questions, please visit the FAQ page. OK, a bonus acronym for you. A new slang acronym that I only learnt recently and that I'd like to share with you is the acronym DINK. A DINK is someone who is a partner in a working couple with no children but who earns well. DINK stands for double income, no kids. Or dual income, no kids. The acronym DINK is often used by luxury marketing companies in order to target items that couples living together 
who do not have children because they usually have a higher disposable income. That means they have money to spend on products and items. Our luxury Airbnb is mainly rented by dinks. I have also heard the acronym DINKY, double income, no kids yet. Okay, acronyms are a huge topic, especially with the development and popularity of social media. There are so many. How will you use the acronyms that we have learnt today? What other acronyms do you know and use that I haven't covered today? Thank you again for joining me and I'll see you again very soon. Take care, bye.